I just wanted to run through some of the st statistics that we'd come up from, uh, from our article. Um, we found in the survey of the high school that 65% of the children between 16, uh, 14 and 16 have accessed porn online. And one third of the children surveyed had first looked at sexual images online at 10 years or younger. Uh, and 75% of them say their parents have never discussed online porn with them. I wonder, Susanna, what you make of those statistics, whether they're surprising to you, and what sort of effect you think being able to see graphic images at a young age has on children and teenagers. Well, I'm not surprised. Um, I think any of us who use the internet know how accessible pornography is, and not just people in intercourse, but people in, you know, doing all sorts of things that many of us would, you know, label as uh, perverse, actually. So I'm not surprised. Um, what the impact is, I think we really don't know, and that's one of the problems, that uh, we really need to do some more research around that, isn't it? It's an incredibly problematic thing to do. But I mean, John, what do you, what do you well, think? Well, I, I, I remember absolutely with great clarity when I first saw what we would today call the hardcore porn, and I was 19, mm. and I was on holiday in Denmark. Um, and uh, I can still see that image, because I'd never seen anything like it. But I can tell you, the kind of stuff that I saw then is absolutely commonplace now for kids a great deal younger than that. So there is a great deal of anxiety about it. And just to go back to, to the point that Susanna was making, it's very problematic doing research in this area because you can't put children in a room and expose them to hardcore pornographic images and just kind of wait and see five, six, ten years later how they turn out. What you can do, and what I think we must do, is act upon reasonable uh, inferences from reasonable evidence. And uh, I've spoken to people at the Portland Clinic, I've spoken to people at Relate, the Marriage Guidance Council uh, people, uh, and, and to the British Association of Psychotherapists, and they're, they're saying that their consulting rooms are stuffed with adults who have got into all kinds of problematic relationships and problematic situations precisely because of the new mass availability of pornography that they've had difficulty coping with. And the conclusion that they've drawn is, is that if adults are having problems coping with this new mass availability of these types of images, then it's not unreasonable to deduce that children who are exposed to exactly the same images in exactly the same way must be getting into all kinds of difficulties. And we shouldn't wait 20 years to find out if we were right. I I mean, cer well, certainly on Mum's Net, and it's not <coughs> research or evidence, but the survey, the evidence shows that parents feel very strongly that this kind of access, particularly to preteens, um, is has a very negative impact. I mean, when we surveyed, only three percent thought they, it would have no impact. Eighty-five percent said strongly they think it was, has a strong negative impact. Now, that's not evidence, but it, it, parental instinct should not be ignored in this. I mean, parents know their children. Um, and I agree, it's very hard to conduct any kind of meaningful research. So I think mm -hmm. we, we just need to be aware that um, most parents that we surveyed on Mumsnet really feel they, there's nothing much they can do about it, to be honest. They can have the conversation. They, but well, although many of them didn't d hadn't had the conversation, well, I mean, it, I know many of them had young, young children. children. Yeah. Um, if you look at the people who said, have they had it or had they planned to, mm. then actually mm. it was a majority. It was getting on to 65%. So two thirds were planning to speak to their children about pornography online. But by far the majority feel that regulation is necessary, that actually that conversation won't be enough, mm. that the combination of peer pressure and the absolute widespread nature of what people can access um, is kind of out of their control and they need help from government. And the key is, you know, and I think what would be useful to get to around this table is how on earth we can articulate that and what sort of things you, could you do that are realistic 
in this world where there is a global internet out there mm. and uh, it's very difficult to control. The problem is one child walks around the playground with mm. a really disturbing image mm. and shows it to other kids. Mm. Now it only takes that one image mm. to perhaps, and we don't have mm. the research, but our instinct is to actually really have quite a profound effect on the way a child that's never had sex mm. views the sexual act. You mm. know, it's a bit like if you ever saw a really uh, disturbing visual image when you were young, whether it was a horror movie, I remember reading a book that I should never have read, and it haunted me for, for years, mm. actually. Mm. Um, so I, th I think that's the problem. You can, you, you can put in every control you like, but you cannot actually control it full stop. You yeah, cannot think, stop every mm. image. And I think the confidence of, of, of parents and carers talking with their children about pornography is, is a huge, a huge mm. issue really. And I, I think they don't know how to. Yeah. I mean talking about sex is difficult but, anyway. But, but they also we're also sort of led to believe that some you know, because the school now looks after giving them sex information in year six or whatever, there there does seem to be this feeling that It'll be it'll be dealt with it, in it, a way. It'll be sorted, it'll at, be school. sorted it, at school. It is sex and relationships should be no, part of it. No, it's not. I don't it know. Needs, I think it's it needs certainly to be. something that mm. should be incorporated. Maybe. Well, it's it one of the things it. on uh, if you on the psychology's website. There's a letter, a form letter to send to the school saying what's your you know what is, what is, does does the school have a policy? And in fact, I just got a text from somebody who had heard me on Five Live from my school, my daughter's school, saying. Would you like to come and, you know, meet with the committee that's trying to sort out the internet well, policy for the school? The schools are meant to do this thing, but it's in the, always, with anything to do with schools, it's, a lot comes down to the individual head and yes. what's happening in an individual school. And can I just go back to the point you were making earlier? You're absolutely right, you can't control everything all of the time, but that's not an argument for not trying to control what you can. There are two ways in which porn can be delivered over a mobile phone. There's one where effectively the mobile phone company itself is the publisher, because it's, it's got to deal with the publishing companies and it's supplied it's over its own nets, you know, like uh, Vodafone Live is, is Vodafone's own publishing arm over the internet, uh, over the mobile phone network. All of that is controlled according to your age, and the default assumption is that you are 18, that you are a child, rather, you are under 18, and if you want to get access to porn that they themselves are publishing, you must prove to the network that you're over 18. In relation to the internet, it's uh, not quite the same. Uh, Vodafone, T-Mobile, and 3, by default, will block all porn access over the internet coming through their phones. Uh, Orange doesn't, uh, with contract phones, but it does with pay-as-you-go phones. O2 is, w is moving to a position, it's not, not yet there, but with O2 it will soon be the case that uh, access to porn over the internet for, via a mobile phone is also blocked by default. So in the end we'll be in a position where only Orange doesn't actually block access to porn on the internet by default. I think pornography is potentially a public health problem that we need to deal with, mm -hmm. but as with other public health issues, it's going to impact more differentially. It's yeah. going to impact differentially on different groups of young people, and I think we need to do some work and some further research identifying which those groups are so we can concentrate resources on them.